So I wanted to speak a little bit about the general election here in the UK. And this is for anyone who's interested. Presumably, if you're watching this video, you have some interest in politics. Um, and what I want to talk about is how actually, far from being boring, this is actually quite an interesting election. Now, in every election, every election, you hear certain rhetoric about this being a once in a generation opportunity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, high level politicians say those things because they want voters to see that there's been big implications of their vote. And that's true. There always is. But I do believe that some general elections have more significance than others. I mean, for example, um, an election like this is much more significant than, say, 2001. Here in the UK, we tend to have some elections that do stand out more than others. I would say in recent years, um, 2010, 1997, um, possibly 92 for the major landslide, um, 79, and a few others. 45 was another one. But um, there are other general elections that are not particularly notable, such as 2005, 2001. Um, 87 and 83, I would say, weren't particularly notable. Um, every election has specific things that happen, um, particular parties that get gains and so on. One thing that's notable in Britain is that from 1945 to 2010, um, we had a sort of pass the parcel, as Nick Clegg would put it, of red, blue, blue, white, or red, blue, blue, red, between Labour and the Conservatives. Now, I'm not saying this was undemocratic. It wasn't. It was, it was because those parties had genuinely got support and they had a mandate to govern. But compared to now, uh, in retrospect, they were rather predictable and boring. Um, I think we are now in a new era of actually a rather interesting time in politics. Um, whatever your views on this general election or specific parties, if you are furious, if you are excited, I don't think anyone who gives politics an inkling of thought would honestly, could honestly say that it's boring. Why? Because several things. Firstly, um, no one can honestly say that they know what is going to happen in this election. No voter, no politician can honestly say that this one is predictable because it really, really isn't. The only thing that's predictable is that we're likely to have another hung parliament. That is the only thing that anyone can say with any certainty. Looking at different opinion polls, none of them seem to be consistent. Some of them are putting Labour in the lead. Some of them are putting the Tories in the lead. Now, one of those two parties will be the biggest party, but we don't even know which one. And almost certainly, whichever of those two parties make up the majority will have to get junior partners or a junior partner. They could go it alone, but that would mean an awkward period of having to sort of go by issue by issue if they go for a minority government. Um, one thing that struck me, actually, is that if Scottish National Party replaced the Liberal Democrats as the third largest party, that almost brings us back to a century ago when the Irish Nationalists were the third largest. It's almost like um, we're in, living in another era. And I've just read an interesting report, and that, I had to look at this twice. The Wake Party, you heard that correct, the Wake Party is being revived. Now, this is probably a bit of a sideshow, and it's uh, certainly not going to be a big political force, but the very fact that the Wake Party is being revived again is incredible. Um, the rise of UKIP is interesting. Um, the interest in the Greens is interesting. Of course, the the SNP thing is interesting. I'm a staunch unionist, but I do think um, one thing I will say for the Scottish referendum is that it definitely politicised the people of Scotland. On one hand, that's a good thing. I don't like some of the sectarian side of it, and I have mentioned in previous videos my concerns about some of the rhetoric, but at the moment, Scotland is anything but apathetic, and that in, in a way is a good thing. It's one area I would actually agree with Alex Salmond on. The referendum was good for democracy insofar as it energised people on both sides. Um, personally, though, I'm a bit concerned about some of the direction that is taking. And of course, I would be very concerned if the Nationals got significant um, power. 
because ultimately it would be to this country breaking up. But I really don't think anyone can say that this election is a boring election. Whatever way you look at it, it's it's anything but boring. Um, I mean, you know, there would be some elections whereby a party would be doing particularly well and it would be almost predictable that they would win the election. Um, let's say, for example, this was 1996. Almost everyone would say, yeah, Labour, Labour's on an ascendancy, this young leader, Tony Blair, Labour's going to get a landslide. And that's what happened in 97. Um, 91 was uh, interesting because I'm going by the year before the elections as a barometer. In 91, the Tories were widely uh, despised. And yet in 92, John Major got the largest popular share of the vote ever. In fact, it's only recently I found out he actually got more votes than Blair did in 97. The largest popular mandate ever in British political history. And it's going to be a while before that's been. Um, and yet the major era is seen as sort of a not particularly eventful era. Um, so politics is definitely, uh, British politics can definitely be an interesting thing at times. Um, like I say, 2001, 2005, I don't think particularly stand out. 2005, Blair got a third term. So in terms of the history books, well, actually, in terms of history books, every election has something notable happens. But definitely some elections stand out more than others. So I want to hear people's opinion on this election. Not, not necessarily on individuals or particular parties, but actually on the election itself. Do you think this is an interesting election? Um, give me predictions. What do you think is going to happen? There's something on Sky News, which is interesting. You can press a little button that says election shake up, uh, election shaker, I think it's called. And um, their correspondent, actually, he's a Channel 4 co correspondent, um, Islam, uh, I forget the guy's name, Islam, something Islam, uh, Islam. Um, I forget the guy's name, but he's an economic correspondent and he gives a sort of analysis of um, what would happen in any given scenario. It's well worth checking out. Um, and yeah, if you have time, check that out because it's very, and it's concise. It's done in a way that's, you know, not too boring and they're only about a minute each. So, for example, you shake it up and it gives a Labour SNP government. It gives a grand coalition between Labour and Tory which is very unlikely to happen unless we have a national emergency. Um, yeah, that's it, really. Um, personally, what I think is going to happen? Well, that's why it's interesting. I, I really don't know. I really, really don't know. Um, not long ago, I would have been tempted to say the Tories would get a minority and they'd have to prop it up and get another coalition because... I feel that Miliband is under a sort of surge of attack from the right wing papers that reminds me of what Neil Kinnock had to go through. And of course, the Kinnock lost the election. Um, I find it difficult to imagine Miliband overcoming this, which is a great pity. Um, and that's not because I endorse everything Labour stands for, but I just think that, uh, you know, that sort of personality politics I've not got much time for. And uh, the Daily Mirror does the same thing with Cameron, but, you know, Miliband has been mercilessly criticised from day one. I would say if there's a pendulum of fair coverage, I would say Miliband definitely gets the, the shit end of the stick so far as the British media is concerned. Um, so in some ways, I almost want him to win just to do the fingers to uh, the Daily Mail. <laughs> um as a centrist, that's my inclination. Um, doesn't mean I support everything Labour stands for. But it's going to be interesting. It's definitely going to be interesting. And um, I'll be awake well into election night following this. Um, I'm not standing this time. Back in 2010, I was standing as a candidate, which meant I didn't get to see all the coverage directly because I was in the count. This time I'm going to be able to watch it directly. Um, this evening I might go to a local debate. Uh, but whatever happens I think it's going to be interesting I'll stop talking now because I'm just repeating myself 
Um, if you're British, let me know what you think is going to happen. Um, this, I'm not asking for people to sort of criticise policy or talk about policy here. I'm talking just in terms of electorally speaking. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think UKIP is going to do well? Do you think they're going to not do so well? Uh, in other words, do you think it's all been a bit of hype? In boxing terms, I also follow boxing. It would be like a big fight being overhyped. So, you know, UKIP's getting a lot of attention, but are they really going to get about eight seats? Or is it all going to be a bit of a overblown thing? Are the Greens going to do better than people expect? You know, they've been widely written off. Maybe they'll do better than people expect. Are the Lib Dems going to be as punished as people think? Personally, I don't think they will, actually. I think, um, and maybe this is because my sympathies lie there, but I think the Lib Dems will suffer. I think they will lose seats. But I don't think it's going to be as bad as certain pundits are making out to be. And I certainly don't think they'll be wiped off the political map. And there it is. That's my view. So let me know. What do you think is going to happen in this election? And for my international viewers, um, do you have any questions about this? Please feel free to ask me. Uh, do you have any observations? What do you, do you think will happen from an outsider's perspective? I'd be very interested to hear that. But what I will say to my international viewers is what we're seeing now in Britain is unusual. Um, something similar happened in 2010. But, I mean, for example, for my American viewers, uh, I would compare our situation for 60 years to the Republican-Democrat swings. Uh, in this country, it was Labour, Conservative, Labour, Conservative. Um, broadly speaking, the Conservatives are allied with the Republicans, Labour with the Democrats, but that's only broadly speaking. Okay. Thank you for watching.